Hey everybody, Lonnie here. We're gonna start on part three of our real-time dashboard with OSIsoft Web API, Web API and AngularJS. So we're gonna be working on the dashboard layout. Uh, if you remember from my demo in the intro, this is kind of what our final product is gonna look like. So what I wanna do is just kind of, I want to do the framework of the dashboard where we're gonna work on this, uh, the canvas area and this uh, navigation area at the top. So let's go ahead and get that put in and I'll explain how that um, how that comes together. So we left off um, with our index HTML page with all our uh, CSS styling and our scripts in there and everything looks like it's great. So let's go ahead and put in um, some HTML and I'm not going to type all this in because I want to uh, minimize the um, amount of time this can take with these videos. Otherwise, we'd be here all day. So what we have, uh, what I have here is I've imported this area, and we can really break it into two different two different sections. This top section here is going to be our navigation, and that's going to put that nav bar at the very top. And the second section here is going to be. Um, that canvas area that we have that's, that's shown in the background. And uh, if, I, if I start this up, you can see how, how it looks. And then I'll come back and explain what's going on with the code here. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do F12 here just to make sure that we're not seeing any errors, and we're not. And you can see here we have this uh, operations portal, summary, and production for a couple of navigation items. And then we have this gray area back here. But if you notice one thing is there's not a little gap in between uh, this, this gray area where our dashboard content's gonna go and all the KPIs in the graph and our navigation. So we wanna go ahead and fix that. And, um, and I'll explain how these different items are getting, being produced. So this, uh, this, the whole way that um, that we're we're achieving what we just saw here is through these classes and these classes like navbar, navbar inverse, navbar fixed top. These are all CSS um, stylings that are getting getting applied to an element, and this is what is creating the the background color, the width. Um, and the behavior of how things are aligned and stuff like that. It's all through styling, and that's coming from the Bootstrap library. So we're just using some common Bootstrap things so you don't have to do that by hand every time. Same way with this container. This container is creating an area within that nav bar, and then we're going to place uh, our, um, our uh, brand, nav bar brand is formatting. That makes it larger. The operations portal uh, is in larger uh, font size. And also, if we click on that, we're going to direct to uh, uh, a summary, uh, self-referenced UR, uh, URL. This pound sign just means that we're not going to go back to the server. We're going to actually stay within the browser. And that's where a router eventually is going to handle that request. Uh, same way down here, we have a couple of... Uh, we have a couple of elements here for our summary and production. You can see how those are laid out. So this is all bootstrap stuff. There's tons of information on the internet on how, how these uh, things work. Um, and you can look at that if you want and go in and you know modify it as you as you deem necessary. The, uh, the last part is this uh, Jumpotron class, which is that container is creating that gray area on the back below the nav bar. And um, this is where we're not seeing, uh, we're not really seeing a division between here and the, our, our navigation bar. So I wanna go ahead and fix that. And we're gonna do a little bit of CSS to fix that um, problem. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop my application because one of the things that, uh, that, um, that I usually do is I'll create a folder and I'll call it app. And this folder here is where all of my uh, files for the client application are going to reside. So in this application, when we're all done, we're gonna have server-side stuff, which is the API stuff that's gonna be running on the server. And we're gonna have this client, uh, this client uh, files that are gonna create this client application that's gonna be running in the browser. So all that browser stuff, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, have that all reside in this application folder. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a style sheet and I'm just going to add, and there's uh, some predefined types here, and they'll put the proper extension on there. 
uh, on the file and I'm going to call this app and if you see it's called app.css and here I'm going to put a styling in for anything in that within a body element I'm going to go ahead and put some padding on the top and that's going to um, that's going to drop uh, drop down our um, our uh, Jumbotron div, it's going to drop it down 70 pixels so we get it underneath that navigation bar. The navigation bar is not going to um, is not going to uh, use this styling. It's going to keep itself at the top. And so when we come back here, we can um, we'll see the styling will get applied to this div. So I'm going to go ahead, save that, and we'll try running it again and see how that looks. Now, one of the things I did forget to do, and you're gonna probably do this 100 times at least, um, if you're lucky, or maybe a thousand times more like me, is whenever you, whenever we add a file, a JavaScript file or CSS file, we need to make sure that we're bringing it in here. Now, um, now one of the uh, one of the things if you notice, I did not actually stop the application. I I just modified this HTML file. I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna come back to my browser. And I'm going to just hit refresh here, and you notice that it did refresh, and we can see that this has now dropped down 70 pixels, and now we can see that we have this uh, nice little, uh, this nice division between our navigation area and where our uh, dashboard area is going to be. So this is all uh, styling stuff, uh, HTML stuff, and um, you know to to get proficient at designing um, dashboards. This is kind of uh, the language you're going to need to know, and uh, it's not uh, terribly hard. It just you know it just takes a little bit of time to pick it up. But I definitely um, definitely the uh, uh, encourage you to to learn more about this stuff and use it to um, your advantage because there's a lot of really um, awesome stuff just in the base HTML and uh, uh, styling um, a lot of power in it. Okay, so so we have our uh, so we have the uh, base application laid out and really that's it for this part. We're going to be moving into um, some serious stuff about Angular in the next section. So. We've got our, uh, we've got this, uh, this uh, stuff with Bootstrap set up, and we're ready to go. Okay, so my name's Lonnie. Uh, stick around for the next part, and um, look forward to doing it. Thanks. Bye bye.